Morning guys, how are we doing? It's my first law trip of 2021. I'm absolutely raring to go, super excited. I literally can't wait. Uh, as you might have noticed, I've got a life jacket on for safety today. Um, I've read some stories previously and um, to be fair, to, you know, truth be honest to you, um, I'd rather spend a couple of quid, get myself proper kitted out, just in the uh, case of knowing that if anything happens, I am uh, you know, should be covered. So yeah, it's absolutely beautiful morning today. I'm just going to show you around quickly and show you, you know, what's happening. Um, we've got an absolutely awesome sunrise on the go at the moment, which is just absolutely beautiful. I'll show you that now. Absolutely stunning. What a way to spend the morning. I'm going to crack on. We're going to get to the location where I'm going today. Um, and then we're going to have a first fish and see if we can you know, try and pull something out this morning. Um, I'm optimistic that we might try. We might be able to get something. The water is dead flat, so it looks like it's going to be top water session today. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to pick out a fish. But yeah, look at that awesome sunrise that's just about to develop. Absolutely beautiful. Let's get down to the mark. So a lot of people ask me what kind of uh, what am I fishing over when I go targeting bass. So this is the this is the answer right here. If it looks good enough to lose your lure, that's where you want to be fishing. So that is the kind of you know, structure that we're going to be fishing over. Mixed reef, rough ground. Right guys, for those of you that previously uh, been asking you know, what type of ground we are fishing over, here is your answer. Oh, just gonna put that. So this is the ground that I'm gonna be fishing over. It's kind of like a mixed like, rock and reefy sort of, sort of ground. We're going to be trying to find the fish in here and what we'll do usually we get here for low tide and fish the low tide back up and obviously as the water floods back into the reef we'll then move back with the water and hopefully land ourselves a bass that's coming back into the reef to feed on crab or, or prawn or anything that's lurking around in this treasure trove of little alleys and roadways for the fish really. I've already tackled up. Uh, the first option that I'm going to be using today is the uh, tried and tested Abu Garcia Tormentor shallow diving lure. That's my first lure that I want to give a go today. A lot of people will be screaming top water when they see the uh, <laughs> the state of the water at the moment because it's proper, proper like flat. There's a little bit of a run to it, but it's not, it's not really, obviously as you can see now, starting to get towards the water's edge. There's not much movement in the water. It's pretty flat, pretty flat. So like I said guys, this is the first trip of the season, um, I'm not, you know, it's much more f for me to get out there and just have a look at the ground and just to, you know, see where the best places to position myself are uh, for future trips and just to um, basically just scope the area and uh, try and find some good places to fish really. Yeah, the water's proper clear man proper clear so just be careful when you're climbing over the rocks they are very slippy oh I've got studs on and I'm still slippy here so yeah what we're gonna get in position um, we'll find a nice position and then we'll start fishing but yeah it looks like a really nice morning for it and uh, I'm looking forward to it right on, guys you know you're in the right place when you find someone's mega bass sonk um, in Pearl mega bass sonk 120 so yeah absolutely awesome find just walking over the reef bit to get to my uh, fishing spot and I uh, just see this on the top of the uh, top of the reef 
absolutely awesome right guys so this is my first spot i've found it's an absolutely beautiful spot i'm not going to give the location away the idea is that i'm going to try and get onto the one of the edges of the rocks over there find a nice flat bit of rock um, and then i'm going to fish off it into into the open sea and then when the tide starts coming out, i'm going to move back um with with the tide so that's that's the plan so i'm going to safely traverse myself across here and then get onto probably probably onto that rock over there to be fair uh, and then fish up along or down the uh the rock faces and try and pick off anything that's lurking around there right guys so we're here we're at our first mark just about to cast out our first lure of 2021 i'm actually really looking forward to this today i'm just going to literally cast it out straight in front of me make sure you've got a little bit of drag pull and then let's crack on for the season not I'm not going to cast it too far. What I want to do is I want to wet the braid first, and uh, I just make sure the braid's sitting nice on the reel before we start going do anything a bit heavy. But yeah, what a nice, what a nice day to be back out. Oh man, I've been waiting for this day for ages. See that law coming back in now. Don't even see the wobble on that law. So, to, like I said, today's just an experiment day, really. I'm just going to experiment and play around with my lures, get used to you know the, the feel of them again after a, quite a long break, to be fair. Um, the last bass I caught was um, October last year, I believe. So yeah, it's all about just coming back out, getting a feel again for it, and then um, just having a bit of a play, really. It's always good when you get that um, when you first cast out your surface law, your subsurface law. Let it sit on the top for a while just to let that initial dump fud gain any interest if there's any there. I should really be on top water now because I don't know really. It looks top watery. It looks very top watery. What I mean by top water is, I mean that it looks nice and still and uh, we want to be creating as much disturbance as possible really. Also when you, when you find a, a mark like this, obviously there's water this side, there's water behind me as well. Uh, just make sure it's uh, safe and you've got a clear safe um, escape of, you know, if anything goes wrong. I know in my head now that uh, the tide's going out so I know that there's no way that I can possibly get stuck on this rock. So just make sure you, you know, you're careful and you know, and plan your journeys well. Had a little knock then. That's quite close in actually. So I'm gonna keep my confidence in this lure for a minute. But yeah, what? A, oh, it's great to be back out on the lures. Absolutely brilliant. That was a snag. Yeah, a couple of go a couple more goes with this uh, shallow dive now. I think we're gonna go top water to be fair.
like I say, it is still really early in the season at the minute. Really early in the season, so. I know a couple, a couple of the lads have had some bass on the lures. Um, but then again, mackerel started to show as well uh, recently around uh, Seaford beaches. So, uh, anything is possible really. Oh, I think I'm tangled there. Yeah, my lure's tangled. Bit of a pain. Let's give it one more cast then with this one and then I'll change over to Pachenko or something like that. One last cast is every angle is saying, but uh, <laughs> might as well enjoy it while we're out here. <laughs> One last cast with this lure and then I'll change over, I think. Just enjoying the surroundings. I thought we had something then. Oh, we're in a snag, I think. All right, we're in a snag. All right. We're out of the snag. A couple of tricks when you're in a snag, if you, if you, if you cast into a snag, or if you, you, know, you get your lure caught in a snag, is uh, tighten up the reel. Um, and just the tension on the line sometimes can free the lure back out of the snag. Uh, also, there's the bay alarm trick as well, which is only, you know, only to be used in extreme circumstances, uh, where you tighten the reel completely, um, and then you hold, you tension the line, the rod, and flick the bay alarm over. Sometimes that can free the lure back out of the snag that it's uh, it's got itself into, or, or you know, in fact, it, the angle has placed the the, uh, the lure into that snag. I think oh, I thought we had a fish on then. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna persist with this lure to be fair for the minute. So I think I'm getting little knocks on it. Uh, <laughs> so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna slow down my speed of my retrieve and just to see if that makes any difference. But I have quite a lot of faith in this lure. Um, caught me bass last year, uh, and it was from you know this area. White with a red head is usually a pretty good colour. Um, for the lures. Oh, it's always. I don't know, to be fair. Let's go try a little one, one last one a bit further out, and then I'm definitely changing. But yeah, I think we're in a good spot, to be fair. Well, I'll say that if I catch a fish. Right guys, so the next the next lure I'm going to use is a surface lure, which is the Pachenko. Pachenko 125 in a nice white colour. To be fair, it's we'll give it a couple of casts and then we'll put a metal on, I think, because obviously with the sun coming out, we might have some luck on the metals. Let's give this a whirl. And uh, see how we get on. I do like the Pachenko, they, 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 they really cast well. Really, really cast well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just going to play the slack in in the uh, in the in the line really. Just reel, just give it a tap. I say I have promised myself this year that I'll be more patient with the surface lures. It does take a while to get used to them. What you want to do is you want to be pulling that rod tip so the lure 
I don't know if you can see it there, it all goes left to right. Another thing to do is to hold the rod up in the air and just bounce the tip of the rod. You just hold the tip of the rod like that and just bounce the tip. Look, people do that. So I'm nowhere near an expert at fishing surface lures. I tend to usually go with the ones that are most <laughs> easiest to use. But I think we've got a good action on the lure at the moment. Then if you can see that coming back in and what the lure is doing. It's just dancing left to right, left to right as it comes back in. Yeah, on a day like today, it's nice and sunny at the moment. Um, I think we're going to probably grab a metal out and uh, give, a met give the metals a go. As I said in my previous video, um, matching colour to condition is quite important. Uh, if it's really sunny like this, uh, anything with a flashing plate on or with um, you know, all this metal that's holographic, it will be reflecting the sun in the water. Um, is, is a good shout or, or so I'm told on a dull dark day where it's pretty cloudy um, I think quite a lot of anglers have said that they favour uh, more brighter colours uh, that stick out more in the water You know, the best method is trial and error though, try everything on the day until you get comfortable and you know what works and what conditions and if you're definitely a beginner just try everything that you've got really and uh, move location, don't stay in one location you know, try different locations obviously I'm out at the minute, I'm in this one location but I just want to you know, try my arsenal of lures that I've got and uh, just give it a go really Another good bit of um, bit of advice that I've learned um, or been you know been taught as well is uh, find out what lures are catching in your area. Ask local people, uh, you know, and, and uh, try and share the knowledge of the lures that they've found successful in the area that you're fishing. Because um, what a lot of people do is they is they just buy loads of lures and um, they just end up with so many different lures, and it's just you know you just end up being a lure magpie. And you know, you don't need every single lure. You just want the ones that are proven to, to, to you know, to catch fish. I'd rather have one lure that costs twenty quid than uh, you know, and, and and I know that you can catch a fish on it, and it's proven to catch fish, than have um, say forty or fifty lures that are like you know five or six quid each that um, you know have never caught a fish. So yeah, ask people in your local area, you know, what what kind of lures. You know they think are working or you know or they've had success with um and you know and and give them a go so yeah that's the uh pachenko again i definitely need to work on <laughs> work on the uh methods with it a bit more but it's nice to give it a good go so let's try the same else all right guys so what i'm choosing now is i'm just choosing something that can reflect the sun um because it's obviously quite sunny now so i'm going to try this savage gear seeker um i haven't had any luck on the seeker um as of yet um over at angling addict 75 swears by the things so, uh, you know, maybe today could be the day. Um, but yeah, just looking at a holographic plate on the side uh, might be something that we can work with and something that will trigger uh, the bass. So, yeah, let's give this a go. These things actually cost miles. And uh, it definitely lives up to its name of the, of the seeker uh, because you're definitely searching out the fish with this, with this lure.
Yeah, as you can see when that comes in, it's got a nice fluttering. Nice fluttering to the law. Cover a lot of ground with this with this law. Oh. No, I thought that was a fish then, there's a snag. Glad I <laughs> glad I put a single on this um this lure now. Let's come and bring it back in and just have a quick look at it. Yeah, nice seaweed there. What I might do in a minute is I might change location, I might just head down a bit further down to the end of that rock formation down there. Yeah, I'm getting snagged there. Don't really fancy losing lures. Um, so, and that's on a single hook as well, which is not ideal. So, right, so I'm really snagged in now. I'm really like snagged in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the bail arm trick. So I'm just gonna pull that tension, flick the bail arm, and then try and release the lure like that. Like I say, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Oh, there we go. So there's the lure back out. Oh. So what I'm just gonna do now is gonna keep that rod tip high and just reel in, and hopefully we'll get our lure back. Yeah, we got our lure back. Right, so I know now there's a snag out that side. I'm not gonna probably cast out to that, that bit again. So, because I'm getting caught on whatever rock it is there. So I'm just gonna move it a little bit over to the, uh, to the right. And then we'll cast out to the right over here. And then we'll see if um, if that's a little bit better terrain. Failing that, then we're going to move out onto the to the edge of the rock formation over there. I don't really fancy losing any of the lures because, you, you know, you don't, no angler wants to lo lose the you know, bits of their arsenal. So uh, if you find if you find a snagging point, then the best thing to do. It's just to move away from it and just, just to find another area where you can cast out and where you're not going to get snagged yeah that looks like a pretty good spot right let's give that another go then like i said before lure fishing is all about uh, like trial and error so uh things that might work on one day uh, won't work on another day and things that work on a different day won't work on you know another day past that so it's all about you know, trying different techniques and different things you know and finding out what works on the day speak speak to more experienced lure anglers is another thing that I've got to got to do myself and uh, just you know home in on their advice and their knowledge So that's another snag there right so what i'm going to do then I, I know i know there's quite a few snags in this area here now uh for top waters it's pretty good and for, you know, for shallow divers that are not going down as far but for this kind of lure um what i'm going to do is i'm just going to move to the edge into the deeper water and uh, hopefully that will allow us to use this lure a little bit more so i definitely i want to catch a fish on this lure and uh i'm keen to give it a give it a better go really it's a lovely looking lure absolutely beautiful looking lure right let's pack up let's head down a little bit right so i just moved to the second location now and i'm just playing around with the uh, with the savage gear seeker still uh, another really important thing i want to share with you guys is that you know when you lure fishing um and you're playing a fish in and you're playing a fish in just loosen the drag a little bit give it a bit of a uh, bit of freedom and a bit of movement when you're playing a fish in and it comes near to your feet do not pull the rod tip in the air um as the pressure on the rod tip will be too much and it will snap the tip it's called a uh, high stacking if you google high stacking you'll be able to see some images um, on there of what not to do with your rod and the certain uh, you know, positions that you can put put your rod in so i mean the, the rod will naturally curve itself over if you have a fish on like you've seen in previous videos uh, all, all across youtube with people catching bass on lures um, yeah, but a lot of things that are new anglers you know you know they might not think about it so don't don't lift your rod up vertically when you've got a fish underneath or it will snap the rod tip 
Uh, it's happened to me before. I hold my hands up, I won't lie, when I first started doing it. Um, I snapped the rod tip by doing the same thing. I had a nice fish on, got it to my feet, lifted the rod tip up um, to, to get the fish out of the water and snapped the tip of the rod. So yeah, definitely don't do that. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not a good idea and you, no, no one wants to snap a rod. So I'm just playing around with this with this Savage Gear Seeker. Um, just trying it at different speeds, different, different, you know, different um, distances. Just to see if we can try and get a hit on it, really. Um, like I said, a lot of people use them, and a lot of people have had, uh, you know, they've they've had a lot of fish on them these laws. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see. If anything, even if we don't catch a fish today, um, what a beautiful day to be out. It's just nice getting out in that fresh air and just, you know, just having time to just think to yourself really, just you know, forget about everything else that's going on in the real world and just uh, just enjoy the surroundings and the fishing. So peaceful, relaxing. Really lightweight. You're not you're not carrying anything too heavy. It's just nice to have the freedom to be able to move about when you want. You know, try different things. And I recommend this type of fishing to anyone. Really, I mean, best place to start if you wanna wanna try and learn lure fishing, or you know, if you want some advice, head down to your local tackle shops. Soak up the knowledge of the people in there that know what they're talking about. Head over to the, uh, the forums as well. And uh, yeah, get get as much advice from other people as you can, and then take the plunge. Because I can guarantee you, when you get your first caught bass, you, you know it's definitely something to remember. All right, so I've tried surface, I've tried subsurface. Um, I've tried metals as well. Uh, what I'm going to try in this area um, before we leave is a couple of soft plastics uh, and then we'll move to the next location I think um, and give that a go which is a little bit further down the coast. Right guys, next lure I'm going to use is the tried and tested pirate laws teaser. I absolutely love these laws. Absolutely brilliant. Last year most of my fish were caught on them. Uh, just a fantastic lure. Um, this one's rigged, weighted, weedless. Uh, what we mean by weedless is that the uh, the hook sits close to the body of the law to prevent snags. If you're fishing this kind of area with um, with uh, like sidewinders that are used for boats, uh, you know you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna lose them. To be fair, uh, you want to be fishing with a weedless kind of setup with soft plastics uh, to prevent the loss of the laws. But yeah, let's give it a go. See how we get on. Uh, another tip as well when uh, you've got lures is um, don't put, if, if you've got like a white or clear lure, don't put it in your box next to a coloured lure because sometimes you can colour transfer. This one's got a nice pink splodge on it <laughs> from putting it next to the pink pirate lures teaser as well. So yeah, just a quick tip for you there. What we're going to do is we're going to cast this out now and uh, have a play with this. And then if we have no luck, we'll move on to the next area. going to try different directions of this this lure uh, and when we was using them last year uh, they were just a really 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 slow retrieve uh, and just let that paddle tail do the action on the end for you it's nice really slow retrieve just taking my time I'm not in a rush We've already picked up some weed. The water itself is not weedy. I think what I'm doing is I'm just hitting the the rocks of the reef underneath us. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to change directions just to where I'm casting, and then just pull that 
lure back over the top of the reef and then hopefully we'll be able to be able to bag ourselves an early season bass which would be absolutely fantastic it will make my little day today if we can catch a bass Again, picking up more weed on the uh, on the lure there. If you get some weed on the lure, just pick the weed back off the lure, and then the lure's ready to go again. So I've got a few more casts here I think and then I'm gonna start moving back down the coastline. I'm gonna cast up this way to be fair. And bringing the lure back across the line of the uh, of the rocks. Ooh. Be careful with your foot in. one more in that direction with that weighted hook on that uh, paddle tail it just it just flies you just cover so much ground with it now those hooks were picked up from sea booms As you can see that little powder tail working its way back towards us there. Absolutely fantastic lure. So I can't get a hook up into the actual recess of the holder, so I'm gonna have to clip it over the bail arm. It's much better to take the longer route and be safe than the short route and be stuck. What I wanna do is I wanna position myself on this rock here. So I'm gonna come over this way and then I'm gonna get up on top of that rock and uh, fish hopefully the flow of water back in into the uh, the V shape in the in the rocks itself over there. Look how clear the water is here guys. Absolutely brilliant. You can see all the way down to the bottom. Right guys, so we're in the water. We are actually in the water. It is freezing. But I've got the waders on so we're not too bad. Go try a various range of um, shallow diving lures just in this little channel here. Just to see if there's anything lurking about. The water's really clear. Proper, proper clear. It looks really nice. I really should be using that Abu Garcia Tormentor. I'm getting stuck on the bottom. Oh, it's not a weed. Oop, it's a nice bit of... Nice bit of 
Oh, look at that. Nice bit of weed that is. I probably should move that away from my fishing area actually. Oh, no, it's going up there. I don't want to get my gloves wet. Yeah, so we're actually in the in the sticks at the moment. Right in the middle of the, uh, the water. I'm trying these lures from Kingdom um, that have been recommended to me. I'm not too sure about the treble placement that I put. I put one treble right at the front and one right at the back. Usually I have them in the middle and at the back. But we'll see. We will see. Bit more into a snag. Let's go and have a look, see what this snagged on. Ooh, yeah, we snagged on a nice bit of rock there. So it's getting a bit deep here. There we go. So now I know there's a big rock in front of me. Just gonna free myself of that. Just gonna stand by this rock actually and cast over this rock into the uh, slightly deeper water there. Again I'm just trying the Abu Garcia Tormentor. I'm picking up quite a lot of weed. I might go to the outer outer rocks actually. Because in here it's clear but it's a bit weedy. To be fair we can do with this area being a little bit deeper to be fair. It's a great bit of area to fish but it's just not Need it to be a bit more, uh, a bit more water in the area. It's a flood a bit more. Yeah, it's picking up loads of weed now. All right, guys. So uh, the time has nearly come for me to think about packing up. Really, I've been out all morning. To be fair, I've tried a variety of different lures. Some that you haven't seen on the camera. Gone through most of the box. To be fair, and. Uh, we ain't had much luck really um i think we're now at the low tide it's not looking like we're going to probably pick out a fish at the moment which is a bit of a shame uh but we're going to give it a couple of casts around this area here and then i think we're going to think about packing up i think we're just hitting the uh the weed yeah <laughs> I think in a couple of weeks time this area will be absolutely awesome uh, for, for lure fishing but at the moment I'm not having much luck to be fair I've tried literally everything everything I can think of but hey that's fishing for you you can't expect to come out and catch every single time you come fishing Like to do you know the same as any kind of hunting I just think I'm hitting quite a lot of the uh, the bottom here action on that action on that lure is absolutely incredible absolutely incredible let's cast oh, okay. If we had a bit more time today, I think I think on the uh, on the flood, this would be an absolutely. I think we would have had a fish today if we had come on the on the flooding tide, or a bit more closer to the actual flood itself. The water a bit more higher, fishing over this ground would be absolutely awesome. Ooh. Yeah, again, picking up the weed again.
let's just try one cast out into the into the open water here. There's quite a lot of reef in front of me to be honest with you. We'll try it. get over that weed again. Well, I'm just going to try one more go in this gully here and then I think we're going to call it a day guys. It's important that if you pick up the weed um, off the bottom of the uh, the reef just to pick it off the hooks. You don't really want any weed obscuring the hook points when you're fishing with the uh, subsurface lures or any kind of surface lures or plugs. Just want to keep them trebles nice and clean and free from any kind of obstruction. Also looking at the flowing of the movement of the water, the water is now coming back in this way and back over this side of the reef. So um, if, if any fish are coming, we you know we know they're going to be coming in into this uh, area of the reef to feed on anything that will be in it. So my idea is to cast across the flow of the water to then hopefully pick up oh, a bass which is you know which has been the idea just to follow the flow of the water and then hopefully so I'm casting across as the water's coming in this way I'm casting across the flow of the water uh, in the hope that the fish is going to come in from this direction this way and then I'm going to come join it in the middle if that makes sense well, that's the, that's the madness behind the theory. I could, I could be completely wrong. I, I most probably am completely wrong, to be honest with you, but that's what the method to the madness at the minute. Oh, I thought we had something then, but it's probably a bit of weed again. Well, I'm probably going to move back to my uh, original vantage point that I had when I first got to this bit. Yeah, more weed. Right, so I'm going to move back to my vantage point. I'm going to let it flood a little bit, and then I'm going to give it one last go. Um, I'm not one to give in, but you know, if there's no fish here and I can't find them, then uh, we'll have to leave it for another day. To be honest with you. Ooh. Ooh. Good rock. At least we know the trebles are sharp. Right, guys. So that is it for the first law session of the year. Unfortunately, it was a blank, uh, but hey, you know, you can't win them all. But as a consolation prize, I did grab myself or find myself should we say a mega bass song so uh, all is not lost and the, uh, the lure fishing fun continues so thanks for joining me guys I hope you've learned a little bit uh, if not anything you've uh, been able to see the kind of ground we're going to be fishing over this year um, there is another lure video that I've done a previous one to this just to show you all the gear that I'm going to be using this year and some of the lures and you know the, the bits and pieces and the accessories I take with me so I'll pop that link in the uh, comments below uh, or in the in the uh, comment section below so you can have a look through that and in the description as well the video description um, if you've got any comments um, or you know or you think I'm doing anything wrong or you have any advice for me uh, please do let me know in the comments because that's obviously how I'm going to learn and how I'm going to progress 
uh, in the uh, lure fishing season going forward. But yeah, it's been a lovely day today here in Eastbourne, uh, down on the reef, and uh, pick up a uh, extra surprise has been it's been pretty good actually. Yeah, so thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.